Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from everyone's favorite Halo YouTuber. I'm Rehab, your favorite Halo YouTuber, and today I want to talk about how to improve your awareness in Halo Infinite. Continuing on the theme of Halo Infinite multiplayer tips, awareness is by far the biggest skill gap in Halo. More important than your shot or strafe is the ability to understand where players are at, where they are coming from, and the general flow of the map. If you've ever watched a professional player in matchmaking, you'll notice it seems like they are always shooting people in the back or side and rarely do they just approach someone head on. This is because they have such high awareness and understanding of the flow of the game that they are constantly positioning themselves to get easy kills. So in today's video, I just want to give you guys a few tips on how to approach the game if you're looking to improve your KD and get better at Halo Infinite Multiplayer. I'm certainly not the best player in the world, but I have a baseline understanding of Halo and I believe I can help new players or anyone that's just been away from Halo for a while. So when it comes to Halo, I like to equate it to driving a car. I think of beginner players as an old lady, hunched over the steering wheel, focused heavily on the road directly in front of her. There's a reason old people have a tendency to be worse drivers than someone who's, say, middle-aged. They are so hyper-focused on the road ahead that they're not aware of the cars around them. Maybe they need to switch lanes, but don't have the awareness to know there's a car coming up fast behind them. Now higher level Halo players are like a good driver, laid back in the seat, relaxed, checking mirrors before switching lanes to see if there's a car coming up, scanning ahead for danger in the road, ready to break at any moment if need be. You may think this is a silly comparison, but just think, when was the last time you were in a game thinking about where you or your teammates are after you got a few kills? Where the other team is going to spawn, where they are likely to go shortly after they spawn, and how the route you are taking may influence spawns. These are all factors that professional players have down to a science, and it is the reason they are always in control of the matchmaking games they play. It's time to start thinking about this. For example, how many of you have had Strongholds games where it just feels like a never-ending cycle of chasing your own tail, or a really close game even though you are heavily outslaying the other team? That's because you or maybe your teammates are constantly pushing for that third objective. If three or all four of you are pushing across the map for the third Stronghold, you may wipe the other team and capture. But the other team is going to spawn on the other side of the map and potentially have time to capture both of the other objectives before you get there and the net result is negative even though your team just got 4 kills without dying. I can't put into words how many times this happens when playing with random teammates in ranked. The same thing goes in oddball. The objective is to hold the ball. But countless times I find teammates running to the total opposite side of the map of our teammate holding the ball. Not only is that teammate unable to help defend the ball, but then once the ball carrier and the other teammates die, they're going to spawn with that teammate across the entire map from the objective. It can be really easy to get distracted and wander off on your own. It's something that I still find myself doing too frequently. But the objective is to look at the big picture. Zoom out and try to understand the entirety of what is happening in the game, not just the short-sighted individual battles. When it comes to capture the flag, the lesser skilled players have the tendency to grab the flag and run it the fastest route, which is usually through bottom mid of the map. But that is an incredibly dangerous area that is sure to get you killed and rarely results in an actual flag cap. When you grab a flag, you need to be taking into account where your teammates are on the map. It's usually a good rule of thumb to run the flag towards your teammates. But on top of that, you should be following the kill feed as well. How long ago did your team get kills before grabbing the flag? And are they about to spawn? Where are they most likely spawning at? Did your team even get kills before you pulled the flag? For the love of Cortana, stop running the flag when the other team has four alive! These are all things you need to take into consideration in a split second when deciding where to run the flag. And it's totally overwhelming. But that is what better players do well in order to win most of their games in matchmaking. My advice for trying to learn the macro big picture of the game would be to load up theater mode in a close game that you either won or lost, and just watch how the game unfolds. Theater mode honestly kinda sucks in this game alongside the rest of the UI, mostly because you can't see everyone through the walls when you have all the outlines on, so you kinda have to do some flying through the map to try and see where everyone is. 
but just watch the game from an overhead view. Watch where you and your teammates are and where the enemy team spawns because of it. Look for any times that you may be pushed up too far and cause the enemy team to spawn behind you for a free flank. Or maybe there's a time you could have easily turned around and helped a teammate stay alive, but instead you were hyper focused on another less important enemy. You can even go into the first person and see that you clearly heard your teammate shooting next to you, you had the audio cue to go help him, but it was just something that you missed. These are all little things that you can work on in order to help build your awareness. It's a lot to keep track of and you aren't going to improve it overnight. But over time as you keep playing, you'll become more aware of your surroundings and will find yourself doing better overall because of it. And that's how to improve your awareness in Halo Infinite. Let me know down in the comments if these tips helped you at all and if there are any specific tips you'd like to see a video on. I am uploading every single day, so be sure to subscribe for more tips videos and consider leaving a like to boost this video if it helped you out. I also stream every single day over on twitch.tv slash rehabs or quitters, so come hang out and watch me try and improve in real time. And also rage. <laughs> a lot of rage. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Later.